Today I want to talk about styling a theme with Gutenberg. In the first video we talked about installing Gutenberg and um, backing up your site before you install it and removing it and we talked a little bit about some of the features of Gutenberg and I had a comment about how to style a theme based on Gutenberg and there's not really any styling that's needed. Gutenberg has its own CSS that's included when you activate it that pretty much follows any theme that you've built. And so in this video, I just want to go through that a little bit and show you what it does on a very basic theme and, um, and kind of talk about how to style for the different aspects. And we'll get into another video later about um, creating our own blocks and all that kind of stuff in Gutenberg. But I just want to talk about in this video, I want to try to make it really short and just talk about the styling of a theme with Gutenberg. All right, so let's get started. So here on the ideapro.tv website that we used for testing and we installed Gutenberg on, you see we have um, here on the dashboard, we have Gutenberg installed as a plugin. And we've done a little bit of editing or adding some details on a post. Here, we'll open that. So this is the test post here and it says Gutenberg. So I added a picture of my wife and I as a header image. I added an image with a caption and um, just a little bit of content and uh, uh, doing a short code. So here on the front end, it shows the, the stuff that we've added and it adds the short code here, right? But now what I wanna do is I want to activate a theme so we're gonna to go to appearance. We didn't make any changes, so we're gonna leave that. So we're using the 2017 default WordPress theme here. But I uploaded a plain theme that I built so that I can show you what happens with no styling whatsoever. So we're gonna activate that. So now here's what it looks like with the 2017 theme. And if I do a refresh, now this is what it looks like with no styling whatsoever. It's very basic, you know, it just basically puts all the stuff there. But you see these items still work because Gutenberg has included the CSS in when you activate it, all right? So it's gonna do the, the list items, it's gonna do the header image, it's gonna, you know, still put a caption underneath the image. But now we're just gonna go into our editor and I'll show you the base, how basic this theme is and show you what we can do to, to fix it, right? Okay, so we're, now we're here in the editor. I wanna go through, this is the theme here, Idea Pro, the basic theme that I uploaded. And I'll go through each little piece here. The footer, it's very basic. It just has, you know, uh, calls in the WP footer, the body and the HTML. The functions is a blank functions file. The header, is a very simple header file. It just has the the title tag and calling in WP head. And then the index is get header and get footer. And then while loop that calls in the posts or content from a page that you have, right? So this is very, very basic. And again, this is using the content for pulling in the Gutenberg information, right? So, and then in here in the style sheet, it's, just the header that tells what this theme is, you know, the name of it and stuff like that. So we're gonna come back to our index here because this is all we're gonna worry about. We're not gonna worry about a header and all that stuff. So here in the index, now I've installed Bootstrap as a plugin. Um, I use Bootstrap on a lot of our sites because it's uh, really quick and easy to use. So I'm going to do a div, whoops, and we're gonna do a container dot cold dash md dash 12. All right, so now we're just gonna copy this and move it inside of this column. Now, if you're not familiar with Bootstrap, what we've done is we've done a container and that container con con constraints the site into um, a certain width, right? 
and then a row starts out a new row. This column is 12 columns wide, All right? So now if we save this file and we go back and we refresh our site here, now we've constrained it to that, um, that little container area, okay? So that's how quick and easy it is to, to, to constrain it, right? Now if we did container fluid and refreshed, now it's gonna give us more of a full width, but it's gonna cut off the edges over here. It's gonna give us a little bit of margins on the sides. Most of the sites that we do are inside of a container like this. And I like this little area because you can't control the width of full width websites. People's uh, page, uh, screens are wider, their computer, depending on what computer they have and stuff. So I like to keep it kind of in this constraint. Now, sometimes we do a um, header at the top or sometimes if you wanted to expand this, you can do that. Um, like we'll go into the header and we'll create a div that is our header container, right? And so we're just gonna do an inline style here. Background color is gray. We'll just call it gray. And we'll say welcome to the header. Now this header is gonna be, whoops, saved it there. Now this header is gonna be the full width of the site. See how it's the full width? So then you can go in and you can say, you know, you can add some padding to it. Um, we'll say 20 pixels, zero pixels, uh, 20 pixels, and zero pixels, all right? So, so now we have a header that's the full width, right? And we could put our logo up here and stuff like that. And we could even say, you know, we could even come in here and go, all right, the header, the gray bar across there is the full width, but we want to contain the um, the information in it, maybe the logo and stuff like that. So we're going to say, you know, container row col dash md dash. Let's do a four, right? All right. Whoops. There we go. All right. So then I like to clean up this code a little bit here. Should have done that when I was submitting it, but when I was creating it. All right. Oops. Come on. Lego. All right. So we're going to clean this up, straighten it up a little bit. Whoops. All right. So here we're going to take this out and we can say logo goes here. Right? So now what we've done is we've con contained the inside part, but we left this gray bar outside, right? And then down here we could say div col dash md dash eight. And if you're not familiar with Bootstrap, Bootstrap's a 12 grid system. And a column, this is a column, and it's for medium size browsers. And then this is eight columns, this is four, right? So we could say the menu goes here, right? So then the menu would go up here and you could easily say text right. I'm not gonna go into details about how all that works and stuff like that, but you could put the menu and the logo here. So that's how quick and easy it is. Gutenberg doesn't really need any styling because the CSS, if you look at here, the CSS is already included for their blocks. So this is a WP block cover image. And if you look over here, you've got WP block cover image, you've got position relative, cover 50%, 430 pixels, width, blah, blah, blah. You've got all this here. So it already comes with the CSS that's required. All right? So let me know in the comments if you, um, if I need to elaborate on anything and Hope that gives you kind of an idea of what Gutenberg, the styling that's required. Again, you can create your own CSS for each piece of the Gutenberg blocks. You just have to inspect the element and see what um, see what the class is for those blocks. And I can go into the more details of that later on. I do want to go into 
uh, developing your own blocks and you know your own uh, creating a block that shows up in the Gutenberg editor instead of a reusable block. So let me know um, in the comments if I need to cover anything else. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.